In previous modules, we discussed collaborative governance and conflict assessment. All the successful factors for collaborative governance and steps in conflict assessment are designed to build consensus in a complex multi-party public dispute. This module will review briefly the steps of a consensus building process and key components in each step. Before we look at a consensus building process, we need to understand the meaning of consensus. While most consensus building efforts seek to achieve unanimous and enthusiastic agreement, it is often challenging to satisfy fully all the interests of stakeholders. In such cases, it is acceptable for a consensus building effort to seek overwhelming agreement that gets as close as possible to meeting the interests of every stakeholder after they make their effort to maximize their interests of all the stakeholders. Therefore, the key indicator of whether or not a consensus has been reached is that everyone agrees they can leave with the final proposal. The consensus building procedure consists with several steps to foster an agreement among the stakeholders. Let's go over each step from convening first. Convening is an effort to bring relevant stakeholders together to a consensus building process. A convener is usually a person in a position of a public agency or organization to initiate a convening process. A convener who consider a consensus building process can use conflict assessment as an essential convening step. Through conflict assessment, the convener determines whether or not it makes sense to go forward with a consensus building process, and if so, gets an idea of how the process can be structured. The next step is about structuring a process. Participants in a consensus building effort may want to get to substantive and controversial issues directly in a hurry. However, it is important for them to address procedural concerns and ground rules at the outset. For example, they need to discuss the range of participants, the rights and responsibilities of participant, facilitator, mediator, executive committee, and sub-working groups, the scope of agenda, behaviors guidelines, rules governing interaction with the media, decision-making procedures, schedule, and deadline. The final draft of a conflict assessment may address such procedural concerns and suggest ground rules so that the participant can review, ratify, and sign the ground rules at the opening organizational meeting. Early consensus on such issues may prevent strategic issues from limiting effective deliberation and negotiation later, and also offer a good opportunity to begin building relationships and establishing trust. The next step is deliberating. During a consensus building process, the participants usually face strong differences and personal antagonism. Also, they are tempted to give in to competitive pressures to get the most out of a fixed size of value. In order to achieve consensus in such a situation, they should create as much value as possible first before they divide them. In other words, participants should engage in cooperative behaviors that make the pie larger first. The best way to create value is to invent creative options. One useful technique for generating creative options is brainstorming. Two important rules for brainstorming are, first, withholding criticism when new ideas are suggested, and second, separating inventing from committing so that participants do not need to worry about the consequences of generated ideas. Brainstorming can be used to generate multiple packages that incorporate trade-offs among agenda or options that participants value differently. The value of generated packages should exceed those of their most likely walk-away option. Another way to explore options and packages is using what-if questions so that participants can feel comfortable when they generate options. When there are scientific or technical uncertainties about controversial issues and options, stakeholders tend to produce their own version of information and data strategically consistent with their interest. 
This often leads to what is called adversary science. In consensus building process, therefore, participants need to agree on the information or find the facts that should be used to reduce uncertainties. Participants should agree on what information is needed and how it should be generated. They need to select expert advisors together to help fact-finding processes. This process can be an opportunity to learn more about the issues under discussion. Deciding step consists of many questions within a consensus building group. First, participants can be asked whether they can think of any improvements to the proposed agreement. Second, whether they can get approval of the proposal from their constituents. Third, whether they can leave with a final proposal. When unanimity cannot be achieved within a specific time frame, an overwhelming level of support, that is, more than 90% of the participants for a final proposal can be adopted as a consensus agreement. When there are any remaining holdouts, they can be asked to suggest a modification to the proposal that would make it acceptable to them without making it less attractive to anyone who has already expressed support for it. Final step is to ensure that an agreement can be implemented. The participants as representatives of stakeholder groups in a consensus building process should communicate with their constituents or members in their organizations about the draft of agreement. The members of the group or organization should have sufficient time to review the draft and comment on that. The participant can conclude a consensus building process by endorsing the final draft of agreement with their own names and signatures. A signature means a commitment to the everything possible to support the consensus agreement until the agreement is adopted as final government decision and implemented. Any informal agreement from a consensus building process should contain the steps to ensure that the agreement will be incorporated or adopted by whatever formal means are appropriate. Also, responsibilities and methods for monitoring implementation of the agreement should be specified in the agreement. And the agreement should include a dispute resolution mechanism if circumstances change or one or more participants fail to implement the agreement. Now, Let's review what we have learned in this module on consensus building process. Building consensus in a complex multi-party public dispute requires going slow with careful preparation and process management. This module explains each step of a consensus building procedure from convening to implementing agreements. It is important for them to structure a process collectively by addressing procedural concerns and ground rules at the outset. In their deliberation, participants should engage in cooperative behaviors that make the pie larger first through useful techniques and jointly seek to build information or facts. They should do their best to improve proposed agreement to achieve overwhelming level of support from the participants. Any informal agreement from a consensus building process should contain the steps to ensure that the agreement will be incorporated or adopted by whatever formal means are appropriate. 